In one year, the human heart can beat over 30 million times. Your heart beats all the time, whether you know it or not. It's not something you have to think about, unless something goes wrong. About 5 million Americans suffer from heart failure. Heart disease claims about a million lives a year. There are many different treatment options, depending on the severity of the case. For some, all it takes is a lifestyle change. For others, there are medications which can work miracles. Surgery is necessary in some cases. Heart transplants help many, but not everyone is eligible, and there's not always a heart available when needed. A more reliable option was needed, one that doctors and scientists could control. They needed an artificial heart. People have been trying for centuries to understand how the heart operates, and then how to create one. It took until this century to have the technology to make that possible. No attempts were strong enough to sustain the human body. Many people dreamed of a more reliable option. One man was able to make that dream into a reality. His name was Robert Jarvik. Jarvik's father was dying of heart disease. He decided to go to medical school to learn more about how to find a solution. He was passionate about creating an artificial heart, and he brought that passion into the lab. Jarvik was accepted into University of Utah's medical school. From there, he was hired to work in a lab that was working to develop an artificial heart. Because of their little success, Jarvik was given freedom in designing that heart. Within eight months, he developed a design that worked in animals. He was able to take those results and apply them to a human heart replacement. The Jarvik 7 surpassed all of the previous tries. It functioned just like a human heart. It is a little larger than a fist and attaches to the heart's atria. It is powered by a compressed air transferred by tubes that are attached to the patient's heart. The patient's entire heart is taken out and replaced with this mechanical device. One of the primary problems the labs found was powering the device. A human heart works off of human energy, but a mechanical device cannot use that energy and must be powered by a battery instead. The original battery was about the size of a refrigerator to ensure there was enough power. There were many complications, but it was closer to a human heart than any before. An application for the heart was submitted to the Food and Drug Administration to be approved for use in humans. When it finally passed, there were strict rules about who could receive it. They could only implant this heart on people who were sure to die soon. Ultimately, even if they did not live very long, it gave them longer than they would have had. In 1982, Barney Clark became the first patient to ever receive an artificial heart. He called the doctors telling them that it was time when he felt he was about to die. He survived the operation but there was still hardship to come. The doctors were not expecting him to make it through the night, but he still made it. He suffered many trials from nausea and pneumonia to depression. There were six feet of tubes coming from his chest. The sound of the Jarvik heart could be heard clicking with each beat. Oh, no, that's been a pleasure to be able to help people. I mean, you folks learn something. He never left the hospital, but was able to sit up, talk to his wife, and hug his kids. Clark made it 112 days. He died of multiple organ failure and his body shut down, but the Jarvik 7 was still beating. Contrary to popular belief, the Jarvik 7 did not cause infection around the area where the heart was implanted. The Jarvik 7 did not damage red blood cells. There were no blood clots. Overall, Considering the situation, the Jarvik 7 was more successful than expected. From there, more patients received the heart. They were all last chance efforts. The next patient, Bill Schroeder, said, If they tell you that you have a chance to live, you take that chance. There's a lot of trauma in removing a patient's heart and putting in a completely new one. Working with Texas Heart Institute, they developed a new device that could be used as an assistant to the natural heart, the Jarvik 2000 Flowmaker. It is not a completely new heart. Jarvik 2000 Flowmaker is a small valve that allows the patient's real heart to remain. 
is about the size of a C battery. It attaches to the heart in the left ventricle and pumps the blood. The Jarvik 2000 is a better option for many patients. The demand for transplant hearts is rising, but the number of donor hearts stays relatively the same. People still need their hearts if it would have been their only long-term solution. This version of the artificial heart is a more permanent option. The Jarvik 2000 does not beat. It has a spinning rotator that propels blood into the aorta, which goes to the body from the left ventricle. Patients have a manual control of this heart. The natural heart can tell it when the patient needs more blood, if they go running, for example, but a machine cannot tell this. There is a small external controller that can attach to a belt loop. The Jarvik 2000 requires an external battery, as it does not get power from the body. It was much lighter than any before. The whole controller and battery pack weigh less than three pounds. This is such a significant difference from the Jarvik 7. The Jarvik 2000 Flowmaker is a more realistic option for people to continue living their lives. Patients are able to go to work, see their grandson's soccer game, and live regularly as if their heart was pumping on its own. These pumps are the ultimate. They put the heart to rest, but leave the rest of the body so they can move around. They don't have to be in bed. The survival rates went up, and more people received artificial hearts. Today, both the Jarvik 7 and Jarvik 2000 Flowmaker are still used. The Jarvik 7 is now known as the Cardio West Total Artificial Heart. Instead of relying on these artificial hearts to keep their patients alive for the rest of their lives, doctors can use them as a bridge till a transplant heart can be found. But transplantation is still uh, the most effective uh, means of replacing the heart, uh, the heart function of any device that we have. The Jarvik 2000 has been used as a bridge for 79% of the patients, but a lifetime solution for 21%. Dr. Robert Jarvik and his artificial hearts have had a large impact on medicine, particularly the cardiovascular field. So much has been learned about the heart through researching how to replace one. With every patient, they learn more. The technology is constantly progressing and getting closer to finding the perfect artificial heart. All of this began with Robert Jarvik's successful artificial heart. He opened the doors for this field. My goal is to get Beth better. We uh, would be able to allow her to be rid of that big console that she has to wheel around with her. The best way to get her to that endpoint is to support her with one of these pumps for as long as it takes for her to get a heart transplant. Without the artificial hearts, many lives would have been lost. The number of people with heart disease is rising and there are not enough transplant hearts to go around. Numerous lives have been saved, and people have been able to survive until a transplant heart is found. It gives them a better chance to survive. The true impact is still to be known. We have seen how amazing it truly is, but it will only improve. All of this began with Jarvik and his design for Jarvik 7. His design has changed medicine. No longer is heart failure a death sentence, but it's the beginning of a journey. The Jarvik hearts have made it possible to come out the other side. This all started with a man that had a dream. A dream to innovate medicine and give heart failure patients hope. If an artificial heart is ever to achieve its objective, it must be more than a pump. It has to be so good that the patient goes about their daily life and most of the time doesn't think about the fact that they have an artificial heart. Jarvik innovated medicine so that patients are able to forget about their artificial heart and live out their lives. He gave them hope for survival.